Okay, so I will open the meeting. This is the Wednesday, September 6, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting. And our first order of business is to meet with the police chief. But before that, I want to make sure that uh, if anybody's taping the meeting, you identify yourself. Are you taping? No? <laughs> Didn't think so. Um, <laughs> So we're meeting with um, <coughs> our police chief regarding the request for an appointment of a, a new full-time police officer, Brian Wixton. Um, so we received a request in writing from our chief um, to respectfully request the appointment of Brian Wixton to the position of police officer for the town of Lakeville. This position will fill an empty position due to a resignation in March. Uh, Brian graduated from the Reading Police Academy in August and as a self-sponsor <clears throat> he attended on his own time and expense he's gone through a complete background investigation and oral board review he's attending Bridgewater State University to attain a bachelor's degree and is a graduate of Middleborough High School I feel Brian will be an excellent fit for our department so he is requesting uh, an appointment as of September 12th 2017 pending a successful completion of a physical and psychological examination uh, Frank did you want to add anything to that no that's uh, that's pretty much it we're uh, you know we've been short-handed since March uh, be happy to have uh, Brian on board uh, commend him for you know as a self sponsor it's a very tough thing to financially for somebody to you know to go through the police academy on their own obviously they have to focus on that they can't work and I think it shows you know obvious dedication by Brian so uh, we're looking forward to, to having him join the department great uh, so have any questions no no all right well I will move to appoint Brian Wixton as a Lakeville police officer constable effective September 12th 2017 contingent upon successful completion of a physical and psychological testing and for a one-year probationary period I'll second that any further discussion hearing none all those in favor aye aye the motion carries it's unanimous congratulations thank you very congratulations. much congratulations Thank Congratulations. You. Oh, great to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very Brian, much. Nice to meet is, you. Um, your appointment form, you just need to get that to the town clerk and she'll take care of it for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Our second agenda item is to review and vote on a request from the animal control officer to increase adoption fees. David is here, David Freights, thanks for joining us. He's requesting that we increase the fees from 255 to 350. Currently $30 of the adoption fee is credited to the general fund for dog officer fees. And the remainder of it, $225, goes to the vet care donations to cover the cost of rabies vaccinations spaying and neutering the pets and <coughs> other vet care costs including prepping the dog for adoption Dave is looking for some extra money for the sake of uh, because the cost of spaying and neutering is going to increase uh, in September so this is just to cover the cost right on that side of it plus we're going to put chip we're going to chip every dog after after this goes through we're going to have microchips great Plus, we're losing a little bit of money. Every dog's going to be subsidized now with this price we got because um, they um, everybody brings them back for different things. It's almost like selling a used car now. <laughs> oh no! I mean, everybody just they they find something wrong. Do so we not have that? You know that nonprofit that was doing money for? No, they only they started us up, so now we're on our own. Okay. So. That's why we need to keep money in there because sometimes we'll get dogs back and then they'll go to a rescue and we lost two hundred and fifty five dollars. Yeah. So we actually we need to make a little bit of money. Gotcha. The chip addition is that much money? That's gonna be another um, she's only gonna charge me eighteen dollars okay. to put that in. Okay. And can you read the chips? Yeah, that but that's what we're gonna do. So if a dog is out there we can we'll You, you can identify it, you yeah. don't have to find the vet. We have our own chip scanners. Okay. Get all the cable channels with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Play a dog. laughs> um, 
All right, yeah, I don't have any questions about this. Does anybody else have? No, I, I think adoption's the way to go, but I think, I hope that we, not just us, that the adoption idea by charging $350 doesn't drive people away, but it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. A spay, yeah, the a, spay and neutering cost money. It costs money, and we need to pass that on. The average yeah. adoption at a rescue with everybody now is five hundred dollars. Right. No. No, you're still competitive, but it's a lot of money just to adopt a dog when you used to go to a dog yeah, and walk away with one for ten or twenty-five bucks. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen anymore. I actually tell the people, you get the dog for free, you pay for the services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. All right, so do we, we want to vote this? Okay, so I will move that we increase the fee to $350 uh, for the adoption, the adoption fee of, of the uh, animal control department. I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Motion you. Carries it unanimous. Thanks for coming in, Dave. No, thank you. Have a good night. And I'll call thank you about you. the other. <laughs> Just give me a call. I will. Thanks. All right, number three is to review and vote on job description for the non-union part-time IT director position. Draft copy of a proposed job description for an IT director. This position has already been appropriated to our budget. And allow somebody to come in part time and take over this position. This is actually a critical step in the police station design because one of the things we want this person to do is work with the architect to help determine the space needs for the new station relative to IT. So right now they have a general understanding of the amount of space they need. It's really important though that we have somebody get more specifics on the equipment type and, and the number of conduits and all that kind of stuff for different spaces so that they make sure that they design it properly for the, the computer and, and IT needs. Um, so that we don't have to do it after the fact. So that's that's part of the reason why I think this is is coming forward now. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions about it? Or I mean, this is the position that we talked about when we were looking at um, all of IT to split out what was specific to public safety, right? But also included in that was now the needs that you're identifying in the police station and the building of it as to what needs to happen related to that. But that's the same type of position. It's the same person or yeah. this same job skills, yeah. is the same skill set. So then they could be the person where we had um, right because we had someone. We uh, have these needs regardless the of the police station not. project. Right. We do have a specific need for these to be dealt with sooner than later. But once that work's done, there's plenty of IT. Right that this person will continue doing. Yep. Okay. And a lot of what John Barker, the consultant, we had hired as far as um, reviewing our backup, not being tested, he reviewed all of our hardware and software, and actually he just, we just renewed maintenance agreements on equipment that was expiring. So we've been following through on okay. what John Barker's recommended yep. also. Okay. So it's great. I think the timing is good looking at moving the main IT from this building to the new police station and just having backup here. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns, suggestions? No. All right. Well, then I move that we approve the job description uh, as drafted. I'll second that. No, I was good for that. I had Lorraine proofread it for me. Yeah. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous.
It's just waiting to say I. <laughs> Lakeville Lions Family Fun Festival to be held on Saturday, September 9. We've been invited to attend. This is an open to the public event. It is, wow, that's bad. I gotta go that far back. <laughs> September 9th, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., the Lions Family Fun Festival will take place at 170 Main Street. There will be games, food, music, and it's a great event. They, they've, I think they held this last year. It was really well attended, and I think, obviously, they, they do a great job um, with, with projects in the town, and, and I know that they do a lot of fundraising efforts for the sake of um, the causes that they champion. So we're um, just announcing this out to the public to, uh, well, wait, wait, but wait, there's more. Yeah, Rich gave you a whole. Am I supposed to read this? I think he wanted you to. Okay. It's written like a press release, much like the one that I wrote for Roller Jam back in my <laughs> public relations days. Roller Jam was featured on the Nashville Network, which is now known as Spike TV. <laughs> Lakeville Lions to host the second annual Fall Family Fun Festival. Fun with alliteration. Lakeville, Mass, on Saturday, September 9. The Lakeville Lions will be hosting their second annual Fall Family Fun Festival. All of Lakeville is invited, as are anyone else that happened to be hearing this message. Good people of Mars, you are invited <laughs> to come to the local Fall Festival if you are receiving this, this uh, message. There will be food local craft beer, games and activities, tethered balloon rides, that sounds interesting, music and lots of fun. Party starts at two and it will wind, wind. Is that how you spell wind? Yep. <laughs> Down at 7 p.m. This is located at 170 Main Street. Um, Bobby Joyle is the president. He went on to say that last year's event drew 650 people. Where are they going to put 650 people? I have no idea, but they hope for even more people this year. Um, so the long and short of it is they'll have a couple bounce houses, a dunk tank, a private vendor doing face painting. There will be rides in a tethered hot air balloon traditional field games, loop a ball, wiffle ball, softball, beanbag toss, and, vol and volleyball. Uh, you can bring your own, you can even bring your own games. It's a game free for all. Um, admission is free. The food is available for purchase. Um, and this is a great opportunity for people to come and enjoy this event. So go to the event. Last year they came to us prior to and we talked about a police detail. I want to make sure they have a police detail this year. It's a lot of people. A lot of parking along 105, which is not legal. So I want to make sure that... You checked last they have year, a Tracy. We had a police detail there last had year. two or one. Several. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, they had a lot of police there last but, year. Uh, you need to make sure that they have a police detail or details. Singular or plural. <coughs> and <coughs> I would think that they have that in place. I mean, I'm not speaking. One for them, would one would think so. So I, I'm not trying to <coughs> mix it in with this. I'm just uh, last year they came to us and said, "Here's what we're having," which I, I they don't have to come to us, but right. Uh, 
Let's make sure they have that. That's all. Good point. All right. So the next thing on our agenda is to discuss the band bond anticipation note renewal due on September 19th, 2017. We have the following up for renewal that totals $1,050,000. $550,000 for a new pumper with equipment for the fire department, $100,000 for a new backhoe with equipment for the hi highway department, $400,000 for the design for a new police station. The, after the fiscal year 18 schedule pay down, somebody should tell the chair not to eat while he's reading. I'm even annoying myself. Um, the balance will be nine hundred twenty thousand dollars. So one hundred and ten k pay down for the new pumper. Twenty thousand dollar pay down for the backhoe. And zero pay down for the design of the police station. So the question is, do we want to renew this for three months instead of twelve months? So we can have free cash available to appropriate at the special town meeting for the pay down of part or all of the short term debt. Um, total short term debt is $1.555 million. And then we have a schedule of debt. So I guess we'll just open this up to discussion um, to the board. Right, let's I think we have it here because the band's coming due. I would certainly like to pay off debt. So having said that, I'd like to just write it for that shorter period so that we get together and not just address these, but there'd be other things that we should pay off and perhaps fund uh, the OPEB liability and things like that that were taken back at the town meeting. But whether it was taken back or not, we need to be paying for that. So, uh, so it isn't. We're only mentioning this million to two hundred thousand dollars, million fifty thousand dollars, just because it's due. But there's other things that we could also pay off. So that's why I would like to do the short-term note, uh, just so we can make sure we're ready for the town meeting. If you folks agree. Okay. Um, I agree with a three month on that too. I mean, our short term debt is more than half. It's like 65, 70% of our total non exempt debt. And that's what we fund and balance our operating budget on is our ability to be able to go out and, and pay off over a longer period of time some of these capital projects and capital items that we need. I am not a big fan of having excess debt. So as we're adding on, which will be exempt, the police station debt, but um, you know, we always have the option to kind of look at that um, and look at our debt schedule. And any time that we have the ability to pay anything off sooner, I'm happy to look at that and be able to make that decision and not lock ourselves into not being able to after we were unable to pay 80,000 of it um, from the town meeting result. Um, I don't want that to happen again to the point where all you're doing is kicking the can down the road and the debt needs to be paid. So not paying right. a payment on the debt I, doesn't I, do any good for anybody. And I'd like to have that option available at the fall town meeting. I think we have a responsibility to do that. I think that the, the plans, our budget plans at the annual town meeting were were sidelined <clears throat> for the sake of, for the lack of a better term, a special interest group, which is fine, that's politics, but I don't think that that speaks to the, the, I don't think that detracts from the thoughtfulness of our initial plan. I think we need to stick with our initial plan. We need to get that money to, into the OPEB. We need to get that money, we need to use this money to, to pay down debt when we can. So I, I agree with this yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, the the two big items, obviously, uh, we the new ambulance got delivered the last day or two, sitting in the garage waiting to be outfitted. So that should be in service in two to four weeks. Need state inspections and things like that. 
and uh, so that's in the pump a truck looks like first of the year into December God only knows when that that's going to come I think they're building it piece by piece but uh, anyways the ambulance came and uh, so that's a good thing so uh, we just vote on just to vote to renew for three months sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number six is to talk about the sale of the property located at 239 Main Street, the assessor's office. So we had a request for proposals which the deadline was through August 23rd we received zero since then the for sale signs were posted on the property on Tuesday August 29th and we received at least three update two more today oh. nice so there's five so the signs worked is actual interest. The question is, do we want to re-advertise the RFP? I mean, I think the answer obviously is yes. Just the question just is... Deadlines. Yeah, I mean, what is the... What was the last... How long did you have it on last time? Is there a, a requirement? I think so we had it. Go to the center register. So, um, I get the item tomorrow. It will be out on the 13th. And we have to advertise, I believe, at least two weeks before the bids can be opened. So the earliest we could open them would be September 28th. And maybe go out a little bit longer. And we're telling people who call that, yes, like you've got their numbers to call them back yeah. to say when it goes back. All but back one. Out. Person I mean, if I were looking for a piece of real anonymous. estate, I wouldn't be reading that central register. You stay anonymous. I mean, I'd be going on multiple listings. <laughs> so call back. And why? Don't we want to do a multiple listing because of the commission? I mean, we'd have to get quotes. Well, so we're hindered by municipal law in how we're able to sell. Well, we can use a real estate broker <coughs> as well, but we Does have to follow. We have to get quotes for the real estate broker. Correct. Right, but a real estate broker is going to give us their percentage commissions. Yes. So that's but, what you But someone can just say, well, I'll give you 4% and they never advertise. They list on a multiple listing and someone else sells it. But I would not look for a piece of property and, without going to multiple listing. So I, I get the signs. You might be lucky. But people just do everything on the Internet. Uh, now, your commission is what? Is it, is it less than 10 but more than 6 generally? It's generally six, yeah. but it's negotiable. So it could be anywhere yeah. from four to six. So six percent, we'll call it north of ten thousand uh, dollars. I still suggest that. I think the uh, re the central register is a waste of time. You can do it there. We have to do it there, John. That's the law. We're over. If the value is over thirty-five thousand, right, we but have to I don't know that. Well, no interested parties came forward right. with that, so you can still do a real estate broker who's going to put them on multiple listing. Can you or, put it on multiple listing without well, we'll going have to, go to a real through estate the broker? Process. Yes, you can just hire somebody just to list it for a flat fee of say five hundred dollars or whatever. I would do that for sure. You, you get more. Potentially get a lot more interest. I mean, I think that it's amazing you, you got five people. I think you met with somebody too, so that's yeah. six. So, right, but if you can pay someone 500 bucks or a thousand, but whatever the number is to put on a multiple listing, I'd suggest you do that. Two, it's cheap money. You're going to broaden your base. That, yeah, I mean, call me tomorrow and we can talk yeah. about that because. I mean, maybe that's a question for KP Law in terms of how you're not you're not hiring an agent or a broker for the sake of listing the property. You're just hiring somebody 
to get it on MLS. And that's all they do. And it's a very specific requirement, or I should say it's a very specific um, service they're providing. They're not going to meet anybody at the property and show it. They're not, they, all they simply do is put the information you give them on the internet. I'll call Mark Rich tomorrow. Right, if that gets all snarled up in paperwork for a thousand bucks, then shame on everyone. All right, but well, that should be easy, and it should be, be as simple as just go ahead and do it. You know, interested parties go to this website yeah. and place a bid, and that's it. Um, for more information, call town hall. Yeah, the bids will still have to come through the process of the paperwork. Sure. Disclosure. That's okay. But right, but the form of the bid can be there so they can download it and then they yeah. can print it out and fill it out and send it in. Because the RFP is on our website right now and we kept yes, it up it there. Uh, so it's, yeah. Right. They you'll can get, download the whole you'll, To John's point, yeah. maybe you get another six, eight, ten people that are interested. I mean, you can just widen it. And, and the game is. Highest bidder, so yeah. um, it really it really makes sense for for the money to do it. It's it's pretty short, and honestly, if depending on what they say, I have my broker's license. I, I'm a member of MLS. I can list it. Now I need to talk about that with you and Marcus. I wouldn't get paid to do that, obviously, but I also want to make sure that I have no liability in doing that. <laughs> Get someone, you see what I mean? get, get someone else but, to do it and pay them the five hundred right. bucks. Right. I would rather do it that way. But right. my point is, is right. that I don't think that this is a big deal to do. But we just right. got to talk it through, and, and we'll figure that out. And I think it's a great suggestion. Is as good as those signs are, they're only hitting people that happen to drive by Lakeville. There's guys, and women too, probably, that look for houses to flip. You know, they they buy them, they renovate them, they sell them, and they're all over southeastern Massachusetts. And they only look online. They don't. Yeah. They don't drive through Lakeville on a regular That's basis. That's a good idea. Um, so I think, with that said, we definitely want to extend the bid process, and maybe we do want to do it a, a little longer. October fifteenth. Why do I think that's a good date? That sounds good. That's a Sunday. Well, that's a though. Sunday. So the thirteenth. Friday the 13th. Sure, Friday yeah. the 13th, I'll be our lucky day. And you know, we're going to get the, um, the haunted uh, ghost people. Right. <laughs> It'll become on the Middleborough Ghost Tour. That is a haunted building. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I'm told. So, all right, so that's the game Thanks. plan. We'll, we'll work out the details on it, but I think we're all in agreement. We want to obviously re-advertise, and we'll shoot for October 13th for the deadline. And then whatever we do in MLS doesn't affect what Tracy's doing. She can repost and do her thing, right. Right. and that's independent. And then the listing itself is just a different way to market people right. towards right. the central register. Yeah, we didn't expect too many uh, we did have a couple of calls in the central from the central register of people that had saw it but we didn't really expect the other thing too is how many people are even familiar with how to bid on the central register I mean I I'm not personally so I don't know how it refers to our website I believe you have to have a contact. subscription to get the central register or we'll go to the library and, and look at it there so you have to subscribe to it Correct. to even bid it. How does that, what's the process of signing up for that? It's to the Secretary of State's office. I really don't know. Right. Because we don't have the vendors typically are. Sure, no, I get it. Yeah. But people wanting to buy a home to remodel it aren't. The Central Register is basically just an ad. And then the ad directs them to our website to get the, it just basically says, this is what you have. This is who has it. This is the date and time you have to bid on it. And um, go here. So. And then, what's the process to bid then for them? They, they, they just download the document. There's a bunch of forms that they have to fill out, and then they have to submit a sealed bid to our office. 
So you can look up all that information on our website without going to the central register. Right. Yes. All right. So we really want the MLS to direct people to the town website right. for the sake of argument. So we can work out these details yep. tomorrow. Yep. Central register is a red herring in the whole process. Right. Um, all right. Do we have old business? What? Once I don't. No. Any new business? No. Well, other I, than other than executive well, session. Um, I don't know about the EDC meetings. If you want to call that oh, new business right. or any other. Thank you for reminding me of that. I knew there was something I was thinking of. So the EDC met last night, and we struggled through the meeting. Because what I'm finding is, back up so I can see both of you a little better. Um, we really are at a point where we've kind of concluded all of the work we wanted to do in terms of zoning changes, doing research about different aspects of economic development, all that stuff. And we're really kind of directionless. I asked the people in the EDC several meetings ago and subsequent meetings to come to me with any ideas on in, in the terms in terms of what they'd want to do or what they want the mission of, of the group to be. And nobody really uh, nobody provided any insight, honestly. So my thought is I want to keep that group intact, but I don't want to have consistent meetings until we have something to do. Right. Kind of like the Casino Advisory Committee. Right, right. just sitting there. Yeah. It, it would be great if, if, a, if a project came to town and we needed the EDC to mobilize and get information and study stuff for the sake of giving us some insight on stuff. It's a, it's a useful group for that. But when we're sitting there talking about compiling commercial listings, well, I wasn't, but somebody was, and I thought this this really isn't a good use of our time. Not to say that that isn't a bad thing for somebody to do, because maybe it is, but that's nothing, that's not going to provide the Board of Selectmen with advice and guidance on how to make decisions relative to economic development. And that's what the mission is of that board. So it's gotten a little bit watered down, and it's gotten kind of a point where I want to kind of put it on the shelf, but I didn't want to do that without talking with, with the two of you first. Mm -hmm. I guess my only thought would be maybe we can recruit some of those people over there. More than welcome to attend our CDC meetings. <laughs> um, oh, for shame. <laughs> as we had our meeting earlier tonight with our winter fest date tentatively scheduled for January 29th. Um, that, you know, really, if, if they want to attend something of a meeting like that, we have associate memberships available for CDC. But also, some of those people might have really good connections to be able to get our sponsorships for the community. So, I. You uh, should see if they can do the tethered balloon rides. <laughs> I'm not even joking. In the winter? Why not? Was Over snow? Ted Williams Camp? That would yes. be really it's cool. It's only got to do with wind. There's no wind. No, you, you go, go right up, you'd see the pond off in the background. I'll ask the line. It can't be windy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or freezing cold or snowstorm or no, it can be cold. <laughs> it can be cold, just can't be windy. It's cold. Yeah. Did but you just say the 29th though? I thought it's it was the, 20, the 28th. 28th. Just kidding. Last oh, year was okay. the 28th. It's the 28th. Right. You really remember the date? January 28th. Year? Yeah, because I just looked at the human calendar. Just did it about <laughs> 35 minutes ago. I I certainly agree to keep it intact. And, you know, wait for the opportunity where we can give it some tasks to do and there really aren't any. I think people that are on the committee and everyone says, oh, there's an empty building there. Uh, why don't we try to help market it? But that isn't really our purview. That's the landlord or the owner of the property who is going to sit on that property. There's been vacant property now for several years. Right. And it's a price point. I, I can right. say to someone, geez, by the way, you're five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars too high. Right. Why don't you reduce it? Well, that's none of my business. Yep. Right. It's a he, business decision. I don't even know what his right. business is. Yeah. Why he has it priced like he does. I, I 
I have no idea, but I know that our job, their job might not be to market um, properties that we don't own. Right. You know, now we get involved in things that we shouldn't get involved right. in. Right. I mean, we, we had met with a woman, somebody from the state. Yep, Maria Morasco. Um, yes, who offered to send us information on TIFFs. So we got the information on TIFFs and we started talking about it saying this is absurd. Why would you ever give a TIF when you discussing, go one? Well, no, but we're discussing something. It was, a, it was an exercise in, in, in um, it, was, it was a role play, honestly. It was like fictional. It was like, well, do we even have a piece of property that's big enough to utilize a TIF for the sake of development? And then the second question is, do we even want to give one? So, I, I, right away, I thought we're we're now just doing we're just doing talking for the sake of we're meeting for the sake of meeting and talking look for the at, sake of talking. We're not doing project. anything that is 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 right. moving right. moving it forward. The only thing that I could think of too is that there was conversation multiple times about establishing a website for the EDC, and I know that we're talking about maybe redoing our website. And if that's the goal, I would think would be. You know, you're really, it's a marketing arm to try to compete with other local towns to try to get businesses to locate here. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be active, but if all of the surrounding communities around you are trying to generate new business because they're really going out there and marketing to try to, you know, make their presence known that we have a low tax rate, we have this, we have that, we're access to highways. It's one of those things where you could be looked at as a sleepy town that no one knows much about and why would you locate in Lakeville you know you don't know anything about it versus someone who knows more about Middleborough and they've got more commercial property and so it's how much do you really want to go into it because well, well, it we're, either we're, requires we're spending a full effort, on effort marketing someone's property that we don't own well that's you're marketing right. the town is what it, it should be the town yeah, yeah, but so but but having a listing of, of developed properties for rent doesn't benefit the town. What do we care whether they're rented? Honestly, we get the tax money whether they're rented no, or not. All, all it would be would be if I you... Mean, that's what it became. Right. I think that the, the concept behind it is likely more what what's available like the industrial park. You know, do we have any other land? We don't have any land like that. Yeah, there's you know, very any few longer. spots left. Yeah. And there's very little for us to do. Um, I think the big thing was recommending the zoning change on Main Street um, which then the, the zoning uh, bylaw review committee got involved with I mean I think that was that was a great example of something positive that that the economic development committee did that could affect in a positive way some commercial development but there's really nothing left Right. like that right. um, at this time. So, but, Right. And as you read through the TIFs, obviously, it's usually towns that have dual tax rates, and they're trying to incentivize a business to come. Right. And our $13 tax rate, right. uh, you don't do that. Right. It, New Bedford has to do it because they're north of $30. Uh, I, I, I could say 40 but but I, I read it, and I'm not remembering the exact number but you can't give out a tiff and have a thirteen dollar tax rate because now you've not got any tax money coming in for services right. that you're, you're providing subsidizing the service you're subsidizing right. you know, that when the tiff expires we have, we have no desire to do that when the property value becomes economically feasible for someone to develop it they will right. when the landlord wants to drop their rent to a reasonable rate then they'll rent it uh, right, it's market driven. It's market driven, and there aren't there. There's no. There's no parcel that is ideal for commercial development in the sense that there aren't services, the typical services you get in Middleborough right. or Rainham or Taunton and, or Bedford, and, with the sewer, <coughs> water and gas, being right there. Right. I mean, we have some of those things but we don't have all of those things and that's really the biggest limitation to right. development we have right. as a town so, which is fine because right. I think that that works right. to put the brakes on development 
beyond the rate that the, the residents are comfortable with. Yeah. Certain water is required. You have the water available in certain sections. The sewage, remarkably, has been solved its own problems by being able to put a million dollar yeah. treatment center in yeah. <coughs> and have four or five hundred houses or a commensurate number of uh, yeah. industrial buildings, if you will, which there is no industrial right. buildings right. in America today, aside from Raytheon and a few other people. Yeah. But building bonds. <coughs> I'm good with that concept of leaving them as a committee, but not right, meeting regularly. Right. Again, I'm more than encouraged. Nancy got engaged. No, I didn't. <laughs> that ring. It has another we just purpose. noticed it. It has a bigger purpose. Um, For you didn't notice that ring. No, I didn't. Until you <laughs> no, said something. Sure. <laughs> We're not announcing not. that at the selections. <laughs> no, I don't know. What, I should have said but I, that. I think it. I think it should go somewhat in in limbo. Yeah. Every town seems to want to follow another town as they create committees. We're a sleepy town, and there's not a lot that goes on here. But, you know, we we no, want to I keep think, the services up. I think up. we as a committee, though, or as a board, <coughs> we've learned that ourselves. I mean, I think we, we had to dive in and, and get our hands dirty, so to speak, with all of this stuff to kind of know what we know. You know, I, mean, we, I personally had to go through this process of getting involved, I mean, I reaching hope, out to I the hope community, that figuring out what we can in, do. In the serpent presentation, if you will, for the uh, hospital site, I hope that whoever buys the property will go back and look at all the things that were suggested to be done. Sure. And, and use that as a vehicle, and we can help them if help them in suggestions agreeing or whatever as that process goes through yep uh, so, all right so that was yep. the the conversation about EDC so we will shelf that I want to uh, let Lori know needed. let Lori know not to invite that guy in October okay no one will be here. Will the guy sponsor Winterfest? She can invite him to Winterfest. I think he was a commercial real estate agent. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you could get some, get some money out of him. Our next meeting's in September. Do you have any new business? Any other business that may properly come before the meeting? Are we talking about uh, uh, negotiations? Yeah. Uh, so, John wanted to go. Uh, right, so we'll enter executive right, session right. For, for an update on, on union negotiations, yeah. and I'll read the. the uh, Number three. I'll, I'll cast I'm the spell. The fire. <laughs> All right. We are going to enter executive session. <clears throat> Under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21. Three. Three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. I do declare. And, and we will not come back into open session. It's regarding the fire union. Regarding the fire union. That's my motion. I move that. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All the aye. Burke, aye. All right. Thanks, everyone. We're done. <laughs>